Uh oh. Part three. Here we go. To bracketology English. Part three. We are smoking Esoterica's Mark Gate. Mm hmm. A much beloved English blend uh, to some, not to others. Uh, I don't know. This to me is this and Pembroke are the sort of stepchildren of the Esoterica line, I think, personally. Stepchildren? Like, yeah. Why do you say that? I can pretty much find this without a problem. Mm hmm. Um, you know, the ones that give everyone trouble are their aromatics, Stonehaven, Penzance, obviously. And um, the um, like Ramsgate. And, uh, and Soda Bed. And Ramsgate, um, all their Virginias, Tillsbury, Dorchester, Dunbar, all those are difficult to find. But Margate and Pembroke seem to be always pretty much readily available. Hmm. Someone out home is screaming, I'm sure. But. Um, it is, if you look, brick and mortars have a tendency of stocking them and keeping them around because I can find them. It's not, that's, anytime someone asks me for Margate or Pembroke, I've got that just lying around, just like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, and this is sort of like a, uh, I, don't, I don't know what you make of it, but <clears throat> being as young as I am in the game, of the four blends that were that, that are battling this out, Margate's the one I've had the most of. Mm. Actually, Margate's the only one I had had. Well, I had had Squadron Leader once um, before yesterday. But, um, but yeah, Mar I've had the Margate the most. But, um, yeah, Margate and Artisan's one, which we'll, we'll be smoking next. Um, and these are the ones that I was, I'm really seasoned in. This is pretty much where I started smoking Englishes. Pretty much regularly, um, Artisan's Blend was one of my first blends to be introduced as far as an English blend is concerned. Like that's one of the first. I was sort of an aromatic kind of guy, and then um, with just kind of cheap pipes and stuff. And then I was sort of introduced. I think I'd smoked Nightcap before, but what I readily regularly started smoking was Artisan's Blend. And uh, you know, I feel like I pretty much know these two blends like in and out since like I smoked so much of it. Um, but yeah, like, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, the, you know, I'm going to tell you everything I know about it. <laughs> you guys might disagree. Um, but remember these opinions are subjective, you know, your mileage may vary. So, but, uh, let's get into it, man. What do you think? Uh, that toastiness I spoke about, uh, with squadron leader is there. A very different, um, retro hail. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm familiar with it, but I think I'm, I don't know. It's about middle of the road right now for me. Mm. I, uh, so Margate is pretty much a standard English like we discussed earlier. Oriental, Latakia, Virginia to round it out. Um, the difference between Margate from every other blend that we've had is typically you're going to, what we've been smoking, um, because Scandinavian Tobacco Group, um, I think, did the Dunhill blend, the original Dunhill blend that we had, 965. Um, and the Artisan's blend is, uh, it's uh, Copel and Kopp, I think, or something like that, mm -hmm. another German blend. So it, those two have sort of a coarse slash ribbon cut, ribbon cut really for 965. Um, and then squadron leader is a course cut as well, or cube cut kind of, and it was like cross between course cube, but the difference between those, which have, you know, you really just with a pinch, you get a little bit more tobacco versus what you're getting with Margate. Margate absolutely has my favorite cut of all time, uh, shag cut, which is very thin, um, stringy sort of like angel hair pasta of tobacco and i love it because it makes the most beautiful ash and it is so easy to to dry out if you need to it's so easy to smoke when it's a little bit on the moist side and you can actually smoke it a little bit on the moist side which i feel like gives it a little bit more of a punch and a little bit more flavor um which lends itself to the fact that it's just a very traditional english i think yeah. 
it does have a little bit more Latakia than pretty much the other blends that we've smoked. Um, yeah. It is right out in front, that smokiness, you know, you're going to get it just right from a tin opening. And then you have that nice sort of spicy uh, oriental smell, you know, that kind of like citrusy, spicy kind of smell. And then, and it burns and you, you, you know, the, they're really the ones doing the, the most, like, um, I think in the blend. And then, of course, the Virginia sort of rounds it out. And I think, yeah. like I said, the Virginia is in the appropriate balance between that and the Latakia, I think, give you that buttery finish. This is going to be one of the blends that is a little bit more Latakia heavy. Uh, I don't think that should scare people away, though, because I think at the beginning, a beginning English smoker um, would do himself a disservice or herself a disservice if they went with a lighter Latakia. I would say, going back to the, 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 the type of cut of these blends, on the... On the offset, or at the offset, I, I thought that shag would be the, what I like on paper. I'm like, well, you know, the finer it is, I think I'm going to like that the best. But I don't I don't like the stringy aspect of it. Uh, I would much rather, I think I was expecting it to be like a ribbon cut, but cut more in like half. Like mm -hmm. e each of the ribbons, maybe it were cut in half or in like a into thirds. I'm not a big fan of the stringy part of it. Um, I, I think... Ribbon cut and coarse cut is probably still my favorite uh, because maybe maybe for the packability of it, mm -hmm. um, just because it seems like I'm like I got to do a lot of work. Not a lot of I mean it ain't, it ain't, it's not like a terrible amount, but it's so much easier for me to pack a bowl that's in a ribbon cut or a coarse cut than it is a shack cut for me because I have to do a lot of I got to pull off some sort of rip it apart sometimes if if they're too stringy or too in especially if it's too moist, I oh. do like it. I do. I do like the way it's it, like it smokes and it comes down to a good a, a fine ash. But as far as packability, I love that. I, love, I can't. But I'm not really. To me, the packability and the and the cut really doesn't affect anything with this. Or it, I'm not taking that into account for anything that we're doing. Uh, I'm only looking at taste. I uh, think that the, you know when you you hit the nail on the head, man. Like shag clumps that's all there is to it especially yeah. if it's moist it's going to clump it's going to look like spaghetti thrown against the wall you know it's just it it, it, it clumps yeah um i don't mind breaking it apart i think it's easier to manage when you're drying it mm -hmm. i think it smokes a little bit better um granted i do think we'd be doing everyone a disservice if we based taste which is i think what this is really about um to you know the ease of smoking yeah i mean maybe not um i like i said earlier like you know kind of subjective you know if you it just depends kind of like how you want to get into the bowl because i mean there's as much to becoming at ease with packing and sort of setting yourself up your favorite chair your favorite spot going outside taking a wall um, or just doing any of your general things when you're setting up a pipe. But, um, you know, I mean, to me, packing a pipe, whether it's coarse cut or shag cut, I do find that it, there's a there's an easier packability to me with yeah. shag. I just sort of understand it because that's yeah. probably what I started with, so it's easy to pack. Also, I smoked cigarettes, and I used to roll my own, so mm. that's pretty much what a cigarette is. It's a shag cut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's just, it's easier for me to handle, um, personally, but we're really talking about taste. And if you're into taste, I mean, this is a pretty middle of the road blend as far as your Englishes. I've had superior Englishes to this, um, maybe not necessarily in our grouping right now, but, um, you know, as far as like a lat tequila bomb, which is what is really going to have to compete with something that is more rounded like say 965 you're going to want something that really just takes us takes the stage and you know separates itself out it's just like you know what we know you like that 965 and but here's what's up 
we're completely separating ourselves out from it. Like, that's how you defeat something. You just really change it up, in my opinion. Margate, not really does not really doing it. Like, it doesn't yeah. really separate itself out from anything other than, say, a English blend with just a teensy bit more Latakia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, um... Yeah, I, I definitely agree that it is very much a, um... Just a middle of the road English. I, I, I really like. I, I mean, I really like what it's doing, but I I, I think the two earlier in the week um, are um, are just I don't know. They bring more to the table, I guess. Well, I mean, it's not going to be not enjoyable. I think mm. you can enjoy any tobacco, and everyone's going to have their opinion on what their preferred English is. Or what their preferred tobacco is. A lot of people are just Virginia Perique fanatics, and they really don't want to hear about that Latakia Orientalness, you know. Mm -hmm. um, as far as taste and stuff are concerned, uh, 965 has the buttery finish that I like. The good thing about Margate is it is not weak in comparison to, say, like Squadron Leader in Latakia. I do want to taste some of that smoky, woodsy flavor that's going to, you know, come out in that Latakia. Um, but when you, when you put it forward more so with the Orientals and they don't blend as, uh, as effortlessly as say a 965 does, what ends up happening is the Latakia sort of takes over everything and then you have a really overpowering English blend that, you know, I mean, doesn't really, I mean, it, it doesn't really do anything for me. Yeah. Um, not to say that it's bad. But, I mean, I think I could get a lot more out of, say, a Westminster mm. or a, um, uh, maybe, like, Abingdon, which actually is kind of a lap bomb for GLPs. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's just a lot more, you know, in blends that ha have a little bit more characteristic. Or even blends, oh, here's a perfect example. Take Margate. It's kind of humdrum, right? Add a topping of cognac to it, you get Pembroke, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Pembroke's like one of my favorite blends of Esoterica, and it is Morgan Shag Cut with a um, cognac dressing, mm -hmm. and it completely changes the flavor. Kind of gives it sort of a smooth aromatic English, um, and it, it's superior to Englishes say like Northwoods by Boswell. Um, Northwoods is a what I would call a sort of an aromatic English and it has a sweet kind of aftertaste to it more sweet than I would prefer but it does have that Pembroke doesn't overbear you with that aromatic sweetness of the cognac but um, it's there in a way that it sort of marries relatively evenly with the, the blend yeah and what's actually interesting in all this is I don't really have a favorite English, so I, I may find my favorite at the end of all this. <laughs> what stinks, what's not good about it is Margate is, even though it's easier to find than other Esotericas, it's still pretty hard to find. <laughs> Squadron Leader, pretty much hard to find. <laughs> and then 965 might not be able to get it ever again, might be able to get it one day again. Really, I'm, I'm, I hope I like Ash, uh, Artisan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're going to find out. I mean, the, the, like, the, you know, I mean, you like Chelsea Morning. Yeah, I do like Chelsea Morning. Um, but is it going away? Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be announced, I guess. Like, so yeah. we, don't, we don't really know. It's a post-2007 blend, I, so. I like Northwoods. I like uh, Old Dublin from Peterson. I like Star of the East. Uh, just none of them have been, like, stand out to me. Well, Westminster is a good, like, it's been around. It's not going away. Mm -hmm. um, and it tastes pretty good. I yeah. mean, like, I agree. Like, say, like, to me, Pease came into his own in the old London series, which, you know, yeah. Coppice, Gaslight, Quiet Nights, Chelsea Morning, um, Regency Flake, uh, Temple Bar, um, Lagonda, and that might be it. See, I'm really trying to find which this 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 uh, competition may not even 
fix that. But I'm trying to find some, a bulk blend, a bunch of bulk blends um, that I work with. Well, I mean, I think that HH Latakia Flake is superior to mm-hmm. a majority of the things we smoke. And that's a McBarren. I forgot and about you can, it. Yeah. You can buy HH Latakia Flake in bulk. You can buy it by the pound, mm-hmm. which is way more tobacco than you need. Um, but I'm planning on getting a hold of uh, HH Balkan, mm-hmm. um, which is their Balkan blend. And I'd like to see how that stacks up. Plum pudding's really good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that's also kind of a Balkan as well. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, like, there are some, there are some great contenders out there. You just got to search. And, and they're not going anywhere. They're just waiting to be picked up. The, the irony is, is that when you finally do lose out on some of these, like, 965 or, say, Chelsea Morning and, and uh, Quiet Nights go the way of the not- Dodo as well, um, people are going to, you know, come right after the blends that you really like mm-hmm. you know um i remember when I, was, I mean it seemed like i always could see i remember younger zach always saw tilbury at a brick and mortar mm-hmm. but when uh what was it? it was red ribbon by mcclellan mm-hmm. um when it went away and then it seemed like everyone was buying tilbury um, i don't feel like they're comparable but like um but you know that's what happened a lot of people went to other blends when Frog Morton's and the rest of McClellan's blends sort of evaporated. Yeah. Cause it seems like you're always going to have that kind of battle mm-hmm. or that kind of thing going on. But well, I think as far as Margate goes, like I said, I think it's going to it's it's got some catching up to do. I think so far in this challenge. I mean, I think it's a perfectly fine middle of the road. I mean, it would probably be a great blend to recommend to a beginning pipe smoker <laughs> unfortunately if they really like it according to you and some others i'm sure it isn't the most easily obtainable but ne- none of the esoterica blends are none of yeah. them are but i mean it, it would appear that it's a little bit more difficult to acquire this um it'd be like saying like yeah i mean start with stonehaven start with ten cents <laughs> yeah good luck kid um i mean you can fight for it and look I mean, they're, they're there. You just you don't want to make it a part of your rotation, especially if you're, like, extremely, you know, addicted to it because it's it's just probably not going to be around, unfortunately. Yeah. But, so you got it You got it about middle ways right now mm-hmm. in, your, in your countdown or in, or in your breakdown? Well, I think, you know, Margate needs... I mean, I think you just need to be honest about it. You know, the, the allure of Esoterica just doesn't do it for me all the time. Uh, it actually, but, the, you know, I really enjoyed smoking it when I started out. And I don't think anybody could have told me that there was a, a blend that was, you know, superior to Margate, you know, when I was 22. Yeah. Um Times have changed. I do not feel the same way. I've smoked a lot more tobacco between 22 and 32. Um, you have a decade of time to look for other things. Your opinions change. Your taste changes. I mean, the, there's probably enough uh, alkaline buildup and just black tar on my tongues that, like, I'm sure, like, just my sensibilities have changed, you know? Like, or maybe age changes your olfacular senses or you know i I smell differently but yeah i think at 22 i was you know an advocate of margate and now i think that like yeah it's a fine place to start um i'm not gonna go bend over backwards and try to acquire it yeah well i'm almost down there to the bottom Mm -hmm. so that's the one thing about this. Like, I will say this though: Margate gets five stars on being the perfect break tobacco. If you have a small pipe and a pinch of Margate, you can definitely take a fifteen smoking a pipe. So, if yep. you guys have like a, a tiny pipe and Margate and your English connoisseurs, then I definitely recommend grabbing uh, grabbing it because it smokes you're relatively quickly on a half bowl. It just gets down to the bottom quicker, and that. You're not really over puffing it. 
it's just the nature of shag. I think it just continually burns even when you're not puffing on it just because it's just so fine. And that doesn't really sacrifice flavor, which is a compliment to it. Maybe they knew what they were doing when they created the shag cut for Margate because, I mean, it's not the most whopping, amazing flavor packed, you know, blend, but at the same time, I can smoke it in 15 minutes or 20 and uh, get my flavors worth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I'm um, alrighty. Well, I guess until tomorrow, until Artisans Blend. Artisans Blend. So here it comes. The final. The final countdown. See y'all.